Sharon from the Modern Savvy CPA here. Um, I just want to let you guys know that I did end my Smart Money Habits series last week. Um, that was our last video, and it was on em our the emotions we put on money. And I think the emotions that we put on money, and it was also part of it was on um, why we are um, doing all of this, why we want our finances to be in order, why we make goals, why we plan on things. And um, the end all be all of this is to have a fruitful experience, a fruitful life and, and not have all these stressors that we're dealing with uh, because when you have these stressors, you're not enjoying your life. And believe it or not, money, finances is one of the biggest stressors that we have to deal with in our life. And if, we're ju if we just pay attention to it and, and, and we acknowledge it and, and, and we, we make it a part of our overall well-being, then it wouldn't be such a stressor. It would be just part of our, our overall well-being thinking and our overall well-being planning and and it will be better for us to be able to control once we can control our money just like we're controlling everything else in our life or somewhat controlling everything else in our life we are able to um not stress about it so much because if you notice the things that you are able to control you don't stress about um you know we go back to the things we can't control is the things we stress about and i don't know why we do that but that's what we do so today i am going to add a little um uh, how do you say a, la a little session on the more about the emotions on, my, on money, and I'm gonna be totally frank with you guys because there's when you're when when you're listening to someone or you have someone that's influencing your techniques on finances or your decisions about money, you have to make sure that they're telling you the truth number one, and you're telling yourself the truth because you can lie about money and i don't mean lie like you're 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 you're, you're lying lying is de we're deceiving we're deceiving ourselves we have all these little things in life that we de deceive ourselves on because we're trying to make it look better on the outside but honestly the the, the parts that's even the worst about anything that we deceive ourselves with deceive about is when we deceive ourselves about things you can tell a story to someone or the other person or your neighbor or the joneses and things like that and it looks really nice and you're happy that story looks pretty but if that story you start believing it when it's a total lie then you're in bigger trouble than you think so today we're going to talk about what things we deceive ourselves about finances and actually i had named it lies you tell yourself about your finances so these are kind of if you want to call it not smart money habits bad money habits so um that's what we're going to cover a little bit today so this is what starts our foundation and if we are able to deal with these issues then we are able to move on and tell ourselves the truth about our finances. And once you tell yourself the truth and you understand what your picture looks like or what your what your your overall being looks like, then then you're able to fix it. Because if you're lying to yourself or you're deceiving yourself about something, you're never going to be able to fix what the issue is because you're believing that you have no issues. So first you have to admit what your issues are. We all have issues. We all have issues, especially about money. So we first have to decide on what our issues are. So I'm gonna go over a few topics, a few things that I find that I tell myself sometimes about um, my money habits that are that I'm lying about and I, that other people tell me. So the first thing about anything is you, you, whatever you tell everybody else out there is one thing, but when you start believing the things that you're telling people out there, 
as your truth, then something is wrong. So you have to start telling yourself the truth. You have to know what your truth are. So even if you, if you, you know, occasionally you, you have little white lies that you want to say that you're trying to protect other people or when there's truth that there's, it can be more, it can do more harm to you than, than anything else. So you want to be able to um, admit what your serious issues are about money. What uh, and and not not like tell yourself the truth. They said the, the the truth will set you free. Well, in this situation, the truth will lead to financial freedom. So if you tell your money truth and you understand what your bad money habits is, then you can change that. That's when you can change. Because if you don't understand what your bad money habits are, then you are not going to be able to change them. If you're lying to yourself, oh, I'm good with, with this or I'm good with that, then you are not going to be able to change it because you think nothing is wrong. But you have to be able to look at it. So one of the things that we talk about is we tell, tell ourselves that we have our debt under control. You know, and, and how do you know if you have your debt under control? You know, you, if you, you say, okay, I have my debt under control. I have no problems. You know, you, you, you're, you don't pay your minimum monthly credit cards. You know, if you don't at least pay your monthly minimum credit cards, you're in, you're in the deepest part of the trenches when it comes to that truth. You know, you're not, you're, you're, you're in that water. You're trending very low in that water when, when it comes to, to that, you know, occasionally, uh, cause remember debt costs, debt costs more, you know, and when it comes to credit card, credit cards to me is the worst kind of debt that you can have. There are debt that if you have it can be beneficial to you. If it's used wisely, you can be, it can be beneficial to you. Your credit cards should not be one of those that you have as a revolving debt. A credit card should be a way that you pay for things. It shouldn't be an extension of your payment. So you, you have to be honest with yourself and make sure that you take a serious look at your credit card debt. Make sure you really do have debt under control, you know, because what they say, you know, you, you, the highest interest rate, sometimes some credit card companies charges up to 36% of interest on um, credit card debt, on revolving debt. So you never want your credit card debt to be revolving. You want to make sure that you are paying off your credit card. I pay my credit card weekly because I use my credit card as a form of payment. So it's if 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 I am good, would have spent five hundred dollars in cash, I I spend that on my credit card because I'm able to track it. I use my credit cards as a couple of different avenues. They're an extension. I pay it weekly, just like how I would have five hundred dollars, let's say, as part of my budget for my weekly budget for my groceries, my my gas, my this, my that. I take that $500, I pay it down on my credit card. So that's how I pay my credit card. So at the end, I am not revolving debt. I am not revolving credit card debt because I do not want to pay additionally for my groceries or additionally for my gas. Because if you have revolving debt, 99% of the time you're paying interest on that revolving debt. And that is a problem. So you don't want to pay $2 for eggs, which I'm not even sure that we can buy eggs for $2 today, but, and then you're revolving those eggs on your debt and then you're paying interest on it because you haven't paid off for your debt. So at the end of the week, I pay my credit card because it's what I use as my form of payment instead of cash. So not many people use cash today. Some people use cash. I personally don't use cash a lot because it's hard for me to track it. I'm too busy. Um, you know, I don't have time to write things down. So with my credit cards, I'm able to track everything I spend on my, on, on my apps. I'm able to look back at what I spent last year to this year. I'm able to categorize what I spent on coffee, what I spent on food, what I spent on gas. So I'm able to look back and understand my spending habits. So that's one of the reasons I use credit cards for my form of payment. And I pay it off. I don't, I paid, make a payment on it every week. So the key is, is 
if you can't do it, every, if you're not doing it every week, then you want to make sure that you're paying off the balance of your credit card every month. That's one of the reasons I use Amex because Amex doesn't really have, my Amex card doesn't have revolving debt. It has, you know, your amount is due every month and you pay that off. So you want to make sure that that's what you're doing because you don't want to pay additional amounts of interest to be tacked on on your dress, your gas, your food, your restaurant, et cetera. So be honest about your credit card debt. One of the, the main thing is you do not want to have and your goal should be not to have revolving debt. You want to make sure that you are looking at um, your, your credit cards. You want to make, if that is not controlled and you're not at least paying your minimum payment, then you're way off when it comes to that. So the least you should be doing is paying minimum payment. The best you should be doing is paying off your bill at the end. That is your goal. Your goal is to be paying off your revolving credit card every month. That it should be zero when you start the next month. The second thing that we do, uh, that we, we, we tell ourselves or, or is in our, our head is, oh, we keep this loose budget and we're like, oh, that's good enough. Our bu this is good enough. I know what I'm doing. This is good enough. Well, an integral part about managing your money is creating a budget. The way you, I prefer people to create a budget is to look at what you're spending. Track your spending first, then you could understand and create your realistic budget. Uh, like I've said before, I believe in the 50, 20, 30 budget, which is 50% of your fixed costs, things that you need to doing go towards your essentials, 20% goes to your financial goals, whether you're in debt and you need to pay off your, pay off some of your debt, or you're not in debt and you can put, put that towards your savings, your, 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 your savings goals, your savings goal pots that I call them. So, and then 30% goes to personal spending and you know, that type of stuff, like you're eating out and, and, and you know, that pair of shoes that you might want or things like that. So that's what it is. So you want to make sure that you're creating a budget and you're looking at that. And in today's society, we really have no excuse not to create a budget. It is so easy to create a budget to, in today's society. There are so many apps that we can, you know, I can recommend or you can go on and get um, that you're able to easily download all of your information. It even helps you categorize it and you could do it like this. You don't need to be spending hours on it, but you know, you need to be doing it. So it's, it's, it, that's how you control is by understanding, tracking and, 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 and looking at it, tracing, tracking, looking at it. And that's how you'll be able to understand it. You know, the, the other, the other thing that we tell ourselves is the third thing that I'd go and we tell us, oh, my credit is good enough. I have no problems. I'm, you know, I don't, you know, you don't, I don't have any big plans. I don't want to sell, buy a house or a new car or blah, 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 blah. So I don't really need to worry about my credit. You know, the good news is, is that, you know, credit, you can track your credit. You know, there are free credit apps all the time, like freecreditreport.com. You can be able to get, track your credit there for free. So I'm always checking my credit and you think it doesn't matter if I'm buying a house or if I'm getting a new car or, or what it is that I'm looking at doing, I'm always looking at my credit. I always want to understand because sometimes there's mistakes on your credit and that could, could cost you a lot of problems and not having good credit, despite what anybody else says, not having good credit will cost you more money in the end. It'll bust your budget, whatever budget you're preparing, because not having good credit could be the difference between getting a car that you're paying 70% interest rate for, or a car that you're paying 7% interest rate for on your payment. So that could be hundreds of dollars on a car payment. So, and it's, it's the same goes for a mortgage if you're getting a mortgage or even credit cards you know things like that so you want to be able to look at your credit you want to be able to babysit your credit so stop lying to yourself and saying oh my credit is good enough I don't need to look at my credit you always need to be looking at your credit it takes me 10 minutes every morning to look at my credit card statement to look at my credit I look at my credit maybe once a week twice a week to look at my my app for my credit thing 
or to look at my stocks. It takes me about 10 minutes every morning to look at all of that. Um, you know, while you're sitting waiting for your kid at soccer, you could be using the Mint app or all these banks now have money apps that you can use to, to create your budget and, and to be able to track your money and to understand, you know, what you're spending your money on to, to, to be able to involve so you can start controlling your money. You can be doing this while you're waiting for your kid who's playing soccer or basketball or whatever it is. Or you could do this while you're waiting for the plane or the train or whatever it is. So there is absolutely no excuse. You cannot say you don't have the time. When someone tells me they don't have time, I tell them they're not prioritizing it. So it's up to you what you want to have time for. So if you're prioritizing financial wellness, then you're going to have the time for it. And honestly, it does not take the hours that it used to take before. If you're, if you're spending all of your money, if you're, if your spending is on a credit card, then you, it's so easy to do it. If it's on a debit card, it's easy to do it too. So because everything is on there. You can look back years and years and years. I've looked back years and years and years. So I know what I spent on my vacation that I went on, went to in Alaska five years ago. So I can tell you that that's the way you can do it. So, so if you're tracking your credit, it could mean a difference between a couple of hundred points on your credit. So it just takes like a few seconds to get all of this going and make sure that you, you're tracking your credit. So it's not a real, it's not a big deal. You can do it on the commercials while you're watching the heat game. If, if, if that's the situation. So that it's, there's no excuse for that. So stop lying to yourself that your credit is good enough. It is not good enough if you don't know what your numbers are. So understanding your numbers is the way you can control it. If you know what your numbers are, then you can control it. If you don't know what your numbers are, you're more than far from way to control it. So that's the other thing. The fourth thing I need to tell you guys about that we lie to ourselves about is, you know, oh, I make enough money to justify my spending habits. So, you know, maybe I can spend a little here, much there, or a little there, or I deserve this treat, or I deserve that treat. Yes, you can plan your treats too. You have to, this part of it, I always suggest, stop spending money on the whim. Think about what you're spending your money on, because if your prior priorities is what's important, you can't spend your money on everything. You don't have enough money to spend on everything you want. You have to prioritize your wants, whatever lifestyle you're living, you have to prioritize it. So you need to make sure that you, that's what you're doing. You know, it might sound strange, but brands that wants to hear your opinion they're you know making this business decisions they're willing to pay for it so sometimes you can you know look at at, at 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 the brands that you're looking at and and work out ways that you can you know prioritize spending that you think you might want to be spending on so you want to make sure that the things that you want you shop for them never buy anything on retail I don't buy anything on retail. I like nice things, but it's never retail. I'm always either finding um, a discount code or I'm, my Amex has coupons on it or something. You know, even my red bottom shoes were not bought on retail. So that just tells you that that's, that's the ultimate thing there. So you want to make sure that, you know, when your, your spending habits are within that budget, because you're tracking it within that, that realm of controlling and never, ever buy on impulse. Always, always think about what you want to buy because you're prioritizing. If you're getting red bottoms, you can't get that Louis Vuitton bag because the likelihood is your budget cannot handle both things at one time. You have to wait on your, that Louis Vuitton bag. So you have to make sure that you don't lie to yourself and say, oh, I can get both of these things because my budget allows it. Show, if your budget allows it, look at it and show yourself where your budget allows it. Don't lie to yourself and put blinders on. Take the blinders off about your spending habits. Stop lying to yourself. Make sure that you understand that, you know. Um, a lot of the things that we, we I say, I say, I don't waste time on my phone. My husband says he doesn't waste time on my, his phone. He is the big time waster on phone. So I always tell him, I said, you're before you waste your time doing this or doing that. 
prioritize, you, you know, understanding what you're doing with your budget there. When you're playing games on your phone and you're doing things on your phone, all of a sudden there's a tournament and you, you're paying money on that. So let me tell you that all those games on your phone cost money too. They should be a part of your budget. They should be a part of your budget. That's why I use my credit card for one credit card that downloads everything that I spend. One my husband has that he downloads everything that he spends. Some of the credit cards are able to tell you what you spend, what your husband spend, what your child spend. So you you can put download all of that into your app and you then you understand your spending habit. The only way you can change and control your funds is understanding your spending habits. And when you understand your spending habits, you're going to see the difference between your needs and your wants. Remember, you need a pair of shoes, you don't need a pair of red bottoms. So I'll give you an example. I, I bought myself a pair of red bottoms. I needed a pair of shoes. I bought myself a pair of red bottoms the other day. I deserved it. I made my coupons. I saved up for it. I did whatever I could. And I bought almost the exact looking pair of shoes at Ross from Nine West for $19.99. So it was $9.95 for my red bottom, which is $995. And then my exact looking pair of shoes from Ross from Nine West was $19.99. So do I need a pair of red bottoms? Do I need a pair of shoes? Yes. What is my need? Is it the $19.99 here or is it the $995 here? This was what I need. This is what I wanted. So you have to understand, do not confuse your need and your wants. You need a pair of shoes, but you don't need the most expensive pair of shoes. You need a car, but you don't need the most expensive car. So when you're lying to yourself, oh, I, I can't cut anything out of my budget because I am, um, I need that car. Yes, you need the car, but you don't need a Mercedes. Yes, you need a house, but you don't need a 4,000 square foot house. Not right now. You can get your 4,000 square foot house after you've creeped up and you've walked. We have a saying in my culture, you have to creep before you walk, which means a baby just doesn't stand up and start walking. They, they start crawling. First, they sit up, they start crawling, they start walking, then they start running. You start with your starter house, maybe a condo, then you move on to, you know, so some people will say, I'm not buying a house because I can't get everything I want in that house. That you need a house. You'd rather waste the money on paying $4,000 rent, or you'd rather take that $4,000 and spend it on a starter house. So you have to start somewhere to get where, where you actually want it. So patience is part of the controlling of your money, you know. So, and the, the biggest lie that we all tell ourselves is, oh, we can't cut our bills any further. I, I don't know where I can cut. Well, if you're not tracking, how are you, how, are you, how do you know? what you can cut. If you're not paying attention to your habits and understanding what are your good habits and your bad habits, how do you know? If you tell me that story that I can't cut any further, tell me why. So don't tell me, tell yourself. If you say to yourself, you can't cut, cut any further, why can't you cut any further? Sh show yourself why. Don't lie to yourself about it. Don't deceive yourself. Tell, show yourself why, why you can't cut, cut any further, you know. And honestly, if you are in debt and you need to pay off some of your debt, you, I might suggest you get a second job. To, to, that helps you to understand that when, you are, when you're in debt, that you have to work extra to pay off for the things, all the wants that you got that you shouldn't have gotten and you weren't able to afford. So that to me is a lesson that teaches me that, okay, I've overspent and I have debt. So I'm going to need to get a second job to pay off these, this debt. So that to me is your lesson, your, 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 your lesson that you're learning. You know, I always like to say what's not a blessing is a lesson. So you, when you put yourself into debt, now you have to work extra hard to get yourself out of debt. Once you're out of debt, then you, you don't need that second job and you're paying attention to what you're doing, then you know, you're, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So, so in the end all be all, I would just like to tell you, you guys that the first part of using good money habits is to understand you know, what you're doing, what, what are your bad money habits. 
What are your bad money habits? List them. You know, don't lie to yourself about it. It's okay to lie to other people. I don't really care. But when you start believing your own lies, then it becomes the biggest issue. Tell yourself the truth about your habits. Tell yourself the truth about that. And that is the first step into financial freedom. The first step into becoming better with your money and, you know, being learning smart money habits so you can make better money choices. So this is Sharon, the Modern Savvy CPA, um, ending this series on smart money habits.